job that's real big. Say trying a little, my God is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cards is real big. I gotta do it big. The only way that I can live. And I promise I'm trying to. Before you count me out, homie, let me remind you. They was blocking the shine. Now I think it's my time to. Careful them dollar signs like lights, they'll blind you. Let me rewind to. Back when I was broke and I couldn't acquire two cents. And now I got two wrists. They were sleeping on me, homie, must have got too big. Call my phone, I be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new. Smell like can too. I'm fresh forever like canned food. Try and tell me what I can't do. I want to see the world, my vision on Shamu. That mean I got goals that's real big. Foes that's real big. Y'all offer too little, sorry, my soul is real big. Coming into the ring with blows that's real big. I got to do it big. That's the only way I can live. What would you like to? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. What sound experience would you like to know? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On its way, sir. Sounds amazing. The HyperX Cloud 2 wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hello and welcome, welcome Rocket League fans. We are here and we are live. See, that's the Eastern Collegiate Athletic Conference coming at you now. FBI tugboat here with my man Bass. Oh, over there. There you go. Bass over here. We'll bring you some hot and spicy Rocket League action. Now, Bass, we got Grand Valley State University taking on Wayne State College here in just a minute. Indeed we do. It's best of five, a pretty simple one and done here today. Cut and dry, if you will, but that doesn't make the games any less entertaining. We've got high-level gameplay here today. These players are at the very tippy top of Rocket League, which means we should have an incredible back and forth. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Week three starting here in just a minute, and this will gonna be a best of five. Get some hot and spicy Overwatch action coming at you guys later as well. So when we do finish with Rocket League, be sure to stay tuned there for a little Overwatch at the end. Wayne State College coming in. That's Amatsu Gachi, henceforth referred to as Gachi. That'll be a little bit easier for us. Flush and Cap Insano. Yes, Cap Insano, which I believe is a reference to Captain Insano from the classic Adam Sandler movie, Waterboy. Oh, you gotta love that. You know, little references here and there. This yeah, is one of the nicer yeah. things about working on collegiate stuff. They don't make me feel as old every time I get on that. <laughs> Considering 90% of Rocket League is like 16-year-olds to see these guys come through yeah. and they're, you know, at least somewhat close to my age. I don't Culture. feel like a dinosaur, Culture. you know? <laughs> yes, the, the Adam Sandler uh, cultured comedy coming in there, the reference. Captain Sano, of course, no, he's no Moisey. I think I did the name right. Not sure. <laughs> or the, the voice right. Grand Valley State University made up of Gorilla, Cyber Sausage, and playing with Zap here today. Yes, Bass. That's the sub Zap coming. <laughs> Yo, game number one underway. As you can see, Grand Valley going to be in the blue. Wind State going to be in the blue. And this should be a pretty tense game for the one. You should let them from Kyle on the field there. Not necessarily going to dive as aggressively to start off with. As much as they're just going to kill each other out and figure out how they want to play that one. As you can see, the offer is at a pitch. It's not surprising. No, it's trying to get himself some sort of offense over here. But that's just going to beat some of the wings out of midfield. So it's like they'll have to just hold a little bit carefully. Pop play up, Cyber starting this one, and that's going to be barely tipped on out to this left side. Not 100% sure who got the defense on that 
just like that. Wayne State bouncing this one out to the right side for right now. A little pop play off this left now as Rula is picking this one up. time in the defense the past seconds or so just like that now a pass on one to Grand Valley State University's area now a hit on out to the left side attempted pass that's not Ooh. quite it but Captain Insano rockets this one down to the bottom a little bit of dribble action on that one Bass. Fantastic way to do this as well you can see Cyber's in an awkward position so Insano doesn't necessarily need to do anything too fancy there he needs to slam it on past that last defender they do exactly that a great way to put your team on and a great way to get the first goal of this year. So, solid foot forward, like Bass said here. Wayne State, advantage of one. Their advantage right oh. there, pop over, and Gorilla's gonna strike this one back. And right back to a tie ball. Honestly, this is one of my favorite things about Rocket League. It feels like as soon as the floodgates open, it opens for both sides. That's what we have seen here. In the blink of an eye, we're back to a tie ball game, but with three minutes remaining and the way that this one is building, I'm feeling we might see some more. 50. That's decently won by a Matsugachi right there until it comes in. A bit of a block from Gorilla. Actually, now it's his teammate as well. Grand Valley. Maybe an attempted pass, maybe an attempted shot. Who knows? The theory crafting at this point. Gorilla. This one on over to the right. Flush. It's F. is plenty to burn right here and just walks the dog all along this left line as of right now. 15 seconds outside of halftime as Grand Valley assuming the offensive position. and shots on target. That one off the bar and out. But again, this is the difference right now. It feels like the Green Valley have an overwhelming amount of pressure against their opponents. Who is going to drop those? Well, eventually something's got to strike. Two minutes, seven seconds right there. Driver putting this one down, flush down there at the bottom. Zap on this other side. That kid is going to be very, very grateful that one was going for the wall and not goal. Got a little bit to the outside. Cyber Sasha's taken out towards his middle right here, so a mild numbers advantage for a couple seconds. Little tip play, and Zap gonna put up the second here for Grand Valley. That's a fantastic double touch, and in the middle of traffic as well. Matsugachi, unfortunately, just a little bit too hesitant, and you can understand why their teammate probably needed to go for that one, but they were a little bit nervous. They did not go, and as a result, enough time and space for Grand Valley to find himself in the second goal of this game. Again, we knew that we weren't going to end on a one-to-one scoreline. We knew for certain someone was going to score before the end of regulation. Now with 100 seconds left, Tug, the question is, can we stay playing? Certainly looking for it right now. Gorilla with an easy stop right now. There's a third Wayne State College member up to it, while Zap, the rest of Grand Valley, only uses two. Snyber back to the middle. Tries to get this one past, but really just bumping, grinding with the member all the way down there until defensive player does stop, flush, gets a front row seat. The most dangerous shot from Cyber Sausage so far in the series. Just barely off the mark here, and honestly, at this point, if you're going to be Grand Valley or Old Wayne State, you have to be very careful with every single touch. It's a one goal game, increase to a two. Gorilla gives a little bit of a safety net to his team. There you go, flexing right now is Gorilla. After a strong hit right across the middle, a nice interception on that one and turn it into points. 65 seconds left. Not out of it quite yet. Wayne State College is, and even if they drop this first game, it's still a best of five. Everybody wants to start this with a foot backwards, though. Yeah, I mean, the points in the game are best of five. If any game can try and recover, like you said, putting yourself the best foot forward is going to be massive, and apparently Flush and Captain Sano are not quite done yet. Yeah, that's a nice little one-two play. Captain Sano tries to 
get on the other side of this one. Ball is just simply traveling a little bit too fast. Now a score difference of one in 53 seconds is a significantly different situation we found ourselves in a couple of seconds ago. But if Cyber can finish off the double touch, something special. Possibly gonna put the game away, but as there was no follow up from any of the GPSU players, they're gonna have to go back to the drawing board as well. They're gonna have to go back to the attack once again. 30 seconds remaining, and Tug at this point, they don't need more goals. They would be great, but they just need to hold on. Yeah, that holding on. Definitely what Brandon Valley needs. Wayne State one more, and that's it. Just to tie it up, put this to extra time. We'd love to see that in the first game. Outside of regulation, though, to get that formal overtime situation to hit over. Gavin Sano almost grants us that situation. Now trying to walk the dog in and just barely gets to it. Gorilla gets gifted a shot from a way past half pitch. This one reaching the ground almost. Flush almost there. Pop play up. Flush tries to get over to it. That's still oh, kept wait. alive. Oh, wait. On oh, over and Cyber Sausage with a clutch defensive play at the very last second. We just almost saw a very close overtime situation at 0-0. 3-2 will be game one though, Bass. I am rather impressed to put it simply at this point. <laughs> I mean, we knew that these two teams were going to be incredibly capable and would come into this one red hot, but they not only did that, they had us on the edge of our seats until the very bitter end of that game. So I'm interested to see how this one develops. It does kind of feel like that was a warm-up period for both of the teams, and now that they have had that time to warm up, game two could be a completely different ball game. Yeah, we will definitely see how that one goes. Demolition is not really the focus of either of these teams. Plenty of bumping and grinding now there through the middle. We saw plenty of aerial play as well. Acrobats indeed we have on the pitch here today, Bass. Indeed we do. And now the question is whether or not those acrobatics are going to be on point because that is something we did see in that first game. A little bit of inaccuracy with some of the shooting there. I left the teams a tad vulnerable. But again, it is still a warm-up game, if you will. Game number one is always a chance to fill out your opponents to really understand how you want to play this game. And I think that's something that teams are starting to develop right now. It looks like both of these guys have got an idea of how they want to approach their offenses here. For Wayne State right now, it looks like more sustained pressure. They are trying to build themselves into solid opportunities. Meanwhile, well, for Grand Valley, it's just quick, one and done. They move into your mm -hmm. half, very quickly get a shot on target, and if you're not prepared, you're going to get scored on. It's the reason that they won this first game. Three to two fashion, though, so very, very close game number one. Yep. <clears throat> if we're talking about, like, momentum and kind of who has controlled the pace of this matchup thus far, Wayne State College is really found themselves in a situation, Bass, where they're able to take advantage of mistakes from the other side, whereas Grand Valley State University has more consistently created those opportunities for themselves. The reactive versus proactive uh, kind of argument there, always want to be the first actor there, the proactive, not the reactive. We'll see how that goes. Game two for Grand Valley State University, up 1-0 in the series. You're always going to make your own luck, as they say, but right now, they have found themselves just losing off that offensive pressure here, but no shots to show for it, and they might even get scored on on the other end. Had Zap had that redirect, that probably would have gone directly into the back of the net, but no such luck again. Grand Valley are so good to these transitions. If they even hit one of these shots, that is lights out for Wayne State. Yeah, seriously. And once again, or excuse me, for the first time, really, in game number two, we talked about Grand Valley kind of creating opportunities. That was one gifted to them. Nothing doing on it. Wayne State looking to score a few times, push this to triple zeros, and then tie this one up in game two. Got to get there first, so fast. And down to the outside right now. There's Gachi coming from the outside. Plenty of boost to boot there on the back side. Captain Ooh. Sano with some ankles broken. Flush, a bare pop. That's all that was necessary. All that was possible, really, for this defensive player. Doubled up on offense right there, kind of zigzagging across the ball. Grand Valley a tiny bit lost there for a second until they opt to take it to the other corner. Now centered up, Gachi, weak hit down bottom, but now this is back out to the left side as once again you see Grand Valley members crisscrossing. Just not letting Wayne State even get out of the half. I mean, barely even able to get out of their turn. Finally, Captain Sano is going to give themselves, oh my word, more than just a chance. They're going to give themselves a goal. Monster is 50-50 in the air. Wayne State will be the first to strike. I, I, mean, I lost track of the amount of times he interacts with that ball, escorts it all the way in, and earns that one. Hands down, the flashiest goal we've seen in the series on broadcast 
here in today's match from the past. Wayne, uh, Wayne State, excuse me, uh, taking the lead in definitive form for the first time in this series. Good job, and also the pressure immediately after that goal. Every once in a while, you'll see a team they get the first goal, but then they back off a little bit. They recognize that, okay, now we've got to lose, so let's not expose ourselves a bit too much. But I like that they're not doing that. They need to go right back. They've got their finger on the pole, and they do not want to let it off right now. Three minutes remaining, and I think it's a good idea because with the way that Grand Valley are moving right now, they can find an equalizer and replace them at and now with a rebound play off in the back. Play right here. Looking for some sort of rest for the weary. Not going to happen. Grand Valley is not going to give up another one that easily. It was earned all day for Wayne State the first. Look up the second. Pop plays on out to the left side. Once again, you see three Grand Valley members all in the same like third of just this side of this third. They're very, very centralized. So far that defensive, there you go, that's what we like to see. More spread out members and one on the other side willing to accept this one. Back, back, backboard situation there, Flush does get a hand on this one, sits on the outside until teammate combines with him. That's Captain Sable with a big rebound and redirect out to the other side. Now Grand Valley, one of the defense. Oh, prepared, oh! I was eating my words before I could even speak to them out. I could already tell that was going from bad to worse. Gorilla pops it up, Zap immediately dives, and at that point, both players have abandoned the net. That is an easy sink for Cap Insano. 2-0 it becomes in favor of Wayne State. This is by far a better game for him. Yes, it is. Wayne State. Uh, this is a, kind of a lower scoring affair at this point. I think we saw more goals. This will be more of a tied up situation as it is the first. Oh my god, excuse me, the third really goal here for Wayne State. The second that really gives them a solid, solid lead. This one comes all the way from that pitch. As Flush, they kind of faked on this one. I'm not sure if Gorilla was trying to bite this to the left side, assuming they would have been hit again, or what decides to slow down on the right. Still can't get a hand on this one. That's going to be a third unanswered for Wayne State. Honestly, that goal is the epitome of why some people say that because if you can predict how the opponents are going to play, you can lead it pretty easily. But if the opponent makes a mistake that you're not expecting, all of a sudden you're on the line with a ball over your head and you're going, oh, no, and have no idea what to do. So it's a little bit of a mismatch right now. It does feel like GBS is getting too much respect to Wayne State here. Game one, they were rushing with SC Ball. They were super bold with their plays. Game two, they gave a lot of extra space to Wayne State. And as a result, they both think they can advantage of that. Really have about 75 seconds left in this one for Grand Valley to come back at this one, at least tie it up, maybe push it to overtime. Otherwise, this one will be dead in the water here, Bass. Lots of more difficult for the state. Just not letting off the gas. There's 60 seconds left, Hogan, and I wouldn't be surprised if you think you could board us. The way they've been playing, coordinating on offense so far, really just uh, focusing so much more on passes and their individual offensive opportunities when you're talking about getting through this mid-pitch area is definitely possible all day long. Bounce across the bottom, very weak takeout here from Cyber. Is at the last back, real beating feet to get there and does eventually. Defensive setups, not necessarily something that Grandview has had a problem with earlier in this game too. Now, last, uh, last minute or so, maybe a different story. <laughs> This is one of these things where you expect the GPS to play so much to get themselves into the goal, but they're not moving into this half with as much vigor as they were before. It looks like now they're trying to build up offense, but they're to dive when it comes to a risky play, and another good example there. You can see Cyber is coming across the goal, and Gorilla never wanted to fight, but they probably should have. As a result, Wayne State do hold on to their shutout victory here in game number two. Yeah, shout out victory indeed. The goose egg put up here from your Grand Valley State University squad as Wayne State comes rocking back in game number two. Just like that, Bass, uh, effectively, we have purchased ourselves a best of three now after the tied up game one going the way of Grand, View, Grand Valley State University, 3-2. Now game two going completely the other way and with no scores on boards for the other team. Interesting stuff so far and really just lets my mind wander on like really what was the big difference between game one and two? Like what changed really to allow this score to happen? I think the big thing is two things. One, confidence. It really does show that first game was a little bit of nerves. The teams were playing with some second guessing, with some double commits, with some very odd rotations all around. Second game comes through, they have finally gotten warmed up. They have finally started to feel themselves, and as a result, Wayne State really played to what I would think is a more 
just a better representation of the college overall versus Grand Valley, which I feel like they kind of started off the first game hot and ready to go. And then all of a sudden they start seeing resistance from their opponents and it surprised them to put it simply. They're mm -hmm. not really as comfortable being able to play against a team that is this capable. So I'm interested to see how game number three goes, because if we see another clear victory from Wayne State, I think that that's just going to indicate the end of the series. Yeah, I, I have to agree with you right here. A bit of it is a confidence thing. A bit of it is a momentum thing. Regardless, both of those things are going the way of Wayne State after a 3-0 victory, a route. Uh, you know, two, goal, two goals might be a little bit different. The first little beginning of a lead or whatever, one goal, you know, in 0-1. That's a different story. A 0-3 is the beginning of a real route of another team. Momentum, confidence, everything is going the way of Wayne State College coming into Game 3 right now. 100%. At this point, it just kind of feels like if anything's going to change, it has to be. If Grand Valley want to take this one, it is not because their opponents start lacking, it's because they step up to the plate and hit a home run. 10 seconds into this one, though, already you can see Grand Valley, they're getting aggressive again, they're getting in the face of their opponents, but they are still diving maybe a bit too heavily. Zap there, completely leaves his team vulnerable. That'll mean the end of the offense for Grand Valley. Lush now out, gets absolutely stopped right there. Some more physical play we have seen from Grand Valley so far. Let's see if that one continues, but tell me if you're sensing good of a theme here. 35 seconds on in, hit to the outside, then back in the exact same spot. Backboard play is here for GVSU. Hit to the outside, that was GVSU that fell prey to a huge glancing shot from the middle earlier. This one was open, not gonna happen, at least not gonna happen so early. Game number two. Holy mighty ball. I was going to say, a goal here. Oh my gosh, we are. It is, so <laughs> it is oh, going to happen. Commitment from GVSU. Unfortunately. This one comes all the way from a yeah, three quarters pitch, something like this. Perfectly on point. GVSU bites the bullet for the triple commit offense right here. That huge, again, lobbing play across the middle. And that's Wayne State College, their lead again. the defense is definitely a lot better. Game three comes around and GBSU decide, okay, let's go back to our aggressive strategy. Last, that's not gonna work though if the defense is prepared. The defense is ready to turn away to the ball set in two ways. That sets up an offense. You need to be prepared. You need to hold the player back and hit there. Hit that offense is too difficult for the strike. 90 seconds into this one, it does seem like GBSU are playing a little bit bigger around the kick with foot. The back to the center and it's working. Come back to bite the defense. I mean, uh, GVSU, a squad that definitely has other tricks in the book here. So far, they've gotten the short end of the stick. Well, okay, I was going to say a fantastic offensive opportunity. Don't want to say anything bad when they're shooting like this. Zap now on the other side, the exact mirror defense performance there for Wayne State. Back on over, Grand View, Grand Valley on the defense right now. Like that, back and forth we go. This has just been a little bit of volleyball play back and forth across this middle third. Gonna set you back. Honestly, right now, this is exactly what Wayne State would love to see. They know that they've got momentum in their favor. All they need is a golden opportunity. This could be the one. And Sano puts it up high, but now the pressure has been built. Again, GTSU escapes the grip of their opponents. Uh oh, Zap with a touch like that. I don't think you're gonna quite be able to escape yet. Not Whoa. with shots ripping on target. That's just a little bit lackluster the power of their shot but at this point we're starting to see why gpsu have been such a kiss in this entire match they've been given so little Ooh. space to breathe that they need to make that space for themselves zap the score from a beautiful pass from cyber yeah that is fantastic cyber whether it was an uh, off, uh, like an official honest offensive shot whether it's a pass to the bottom whether it's just centering the ball up who knows who cares after a score <laughs> like that one, Bass? Grand Valley, fantastic stuff, and showing up in the offense for the first time in eight minutes. Is the best way to put it in this way. I think we can both agree that that was a necessary goal for the ABS at this point. Just to try and give them some sort of confidence. Again, this by far looked best when they were playing with the talented. So, no, a good amount of talent. Challenges are fine, so long as you have someone to back you up, and here is why that confidence is king. Cyber Sausage puts in the second one from a beautiful solo. 
Yeah, talk about this control there towards the end. And on the other side, Captain Sato kind of falls prey to a common defensive opportunity. That is, that he waits for the fake or he waits for a commit to one side for so long. Yeah, but by the time he realizes that he's got to make a play on it, it's technically too late. He's followed a straight line all the way in and has neither taken a breath to left or right. Awesome dribbling off the uh, experience there from the Grand Valley the University player. Zap back up to this one. Gachi meeting it there and stopping this one towards the middle. There's really been a lot of back and forth. Kind of a lower scoring affair, right? This is uh, three scores on board that we end the game two with five total in game number one. That's Especially given like how infrequently goals have been scored in this, the ball game it will be indeed. 24 seconds, and this is Wayne State looking to make this one not an issue. Back up there, Cyber wins that one for the most part. Back to the middle, Zap is still there though for Grand Valley. Quarter played, but not cornered out. Barely misses this one at the top of the card. Grand Valley the University number five seconds to go before we hit the formal volleyball. Time situation. Don't want the ball at the ground. Wayne State knows it. This is still anybody's game. Back on out. Grounded ball like it's on. Like it's electrified. Grand Valley striking back. Game number three. You did a good job at really taking that one, I would say, definitively, if you will. It's not an overwhelming victory. It is not domination by any stretch of the imagination, but it was definitely one where Grand Valley sort of cleared all the errors, if you will, that they had in game number two. There was a lot of issues we were talking about in game number two where they were giving too much space to this Wayne State side where they, excuse me, were not diving at the ball as aggressively. Mm -hmm. It just feels like this is, I don't know, it feels like this is one of these things where the momentum is still flip-flopping back and forth. So as much as I want to say that this is Grand Valley playing at, you know, their peak at this point, at starting to play at a really good level, I don't know if I can say definitively they're going to take game number four. It feels like if a good goal goes in favor of Wayne State, all of a sudden, this entire script is flipped on its head. Yeah, I, I mean, this, this, I'm taking like a mathematical approach to this, right? You look at total scores on boards, Grand Valley is up 2-1 in the series with a total of five, whereas you're looking at Wayne State with six on one game one, right? This is Wayne State that has simply figured out a lot better, and there's just so much that goes into a non-goose egg-like situation. You know, uh, that, that game too with Grand Valley not putting up a single score and then taking, I think, like two minutes or so into the next game right there. That is just so much more. There's so much longer there uh, of, of a difference than it is for Wayne State losing a game three that literally went down all the way to the wire. You know, it's just it's, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, this has been a crazy series so far here. We promised you we would enter, we would entertain and deliver something spectacular, and we're only three games into this one, and I can almost guarantee you at this point, we've had two one-goal games. Let's see if we can get a third. Beyond getting a third at this point, let's see if the series can continue. Wayne State would love to, but if GBS do take this game, that is the end of the series, Doug. Yep, we'll, we'll see how that one goes. An early demo. A second demo. You know, one's a uh, one, one's a random mistake. Second one's a coincidence. The third's a definitive answer. We'll see how that one goes. Shot down to the bottom here. Gachi on the other side, trying to cover this one up. Sends it back the wrong way. Now there's a definitive pass. Big boost in hand. Zap the only other one on the other side. Back down to the bottom. Demos everywhere. Smoke and fire here. But they're driving across the line. Back down the middle. Another one here. Once again, tell me a good sense of theme here. Yes. <laughs> Got starting to a little bit. It's very much just going back and forth and back and forth. And Wayne State, they find the aggression here early in game number four. We talked about this many times today. Aggression is great, but if you don't have a goal to show for it, it means almost nothing, especially when Grand Valley has a response like that. Gorilla solo play, and how do they get this with power? <laughs> I am not 100% sure. 60 kilometers an hour translates, I believe, to like 80 or so, or excuse me, 
60 or so miles per hour trans translates to like 60, 75, 80 kilometers per hour or something like that. And, and that is just a hit off the ground. I think maybe like a mini pinch off ground. Who knows? Theory crafting at this point. All I know, all I know, Bass, is that Grand Valley State University is up 1 0 in this game. With plenty of time left, but up 2 1 in the series. Of course, putting Wayne State on, that, on series point as of right now. Not going to be easy for them to battle back. But the good thing is, is they have the people who are going to have to win. They've got plenty of time, but we've seen this many times in the day, Tuck. It really does feel like the event is in favor of whichever team is the first of the four. Right now, Grand Valley, they've got to be feeling themselves. They need to be a little bit careful. Their defense has been a bit over aggressive. If they get exposed even one time, we are back to the ball game. Yeah, I, I, like, I like that Wayne State is getting these demos done, but this is higher level Rocket League. These are six players that can all recover very, very quickly from a demo and with boost to food. You take out a player that's zero in the bottom right right now and give them one and a half seconds back with 34 instantly, sometimes that can literally come back and bite you, especially if that true 50-50 random chance of the left or right spawn ends up on your side. It's, it's stopped offensive performances before, we'll stop them again. I talk about this a lot on Casper. The demo meta has been really something up in special block. I think it's one of the most prevalent things here in the last year or so as Rock has developed. But it's also been disconcerting a couple of different ways where people think, okay, so that means, you know, demo my opponent's constantly. No, if you demo someone and you're not doing it for any reason, what we really do is break the rotation of the team and leave them over like one of their players is all the way on the other side of the pitch. So, for both of these teams right now, it's physicality to keep the ramp up, they need to be careful. Like you said, if they start demo chasing and demo chasing Wayne State College has been doing. Not a single score put in right yet, and only a handful of them even attempted. So far, so far, so much more often attempted by the other two members. Flush and cap onto the demolition, then onto a honest shot attempt onto a goal. Just outside 100 seconds left. Matsugashi thrown epic on top of that save. F here with the demo once again on the end. But now we're going to be see. And this is literally what you were just saying. Cybersauce is in position right now because he got demoed about five seconds ago, Bass. Like, there's no need to demo someone who's on your third. That doesn't really make a lot of sense. If you have a breakaway play, all you're doing is resetting them to the back half. So, yep. yeah, it's just this team up like farther. They are going for demos for the sake of going for demos. It feels like they're kind of back against the wall and don't know what to do here. With 80 seconds left, Laz, it is not time to panic. It is time to buckle down and show what you are made of. You've got one last chance at a comeback. Last chance indeed, and that's the next 60, 70 seconds, excuse me, of this game and of, of all of our lives, everybody. Uh, 60 seconds left now. Bad down to the outside. Wayne State trying to bring this one out. Grill has did something else to say about Whoa. that one. Pop play down. That one just barely, barely got a bad angle on it. Just like that. Grand Valley now on the defense. Wayne State might be their last couple offensive opportunities here, Bass. Here with 40 seconds left, and feeling like they'll need a miracle to bring this one back, or maybe they'll just have an open net. Demo and net. This is now when you want to demo because you've got the but when you've got them, it's awkward. You need to have someone to rip off shots, and not two players going for demo. It was both Flush and I believe Amatsu who were both going for demo there, so no one was ready for the shot. The disorganization of the team could be their downfall, or so it could be a second goal, but no such luck. Grand Valley looking to put this one away while Wayne State look to stay alive, or at least look to get off their own half. Cyber, though, take this one around town and doesn't get it down. Wait a minute, there's still a chance here. No! JVSU spike it to the ground, and Grand Valley State University will take it in four. Yeah, and I would love to see where, like, Gorilla actually was about five seconds previous. There was so much going on there. I'm not actually sure if Gorilla was, again, coming back from a respawn demolition. This is a situation where Grand Valley was given so many opportunities just simply from, like you said, spreading these players across this field. Regardless, though, that's going to be Wayne State College losing in for grand valley state university striking here pretty defensively i mean you know two one game last time the you know the single score digit this game being close as well this is really this really was anybody's game coming all the way through to this and i think the wayne state college simply put a little bit too much too much effort like like we kind of mentioned how that was going there towards the end they came out of this game four 
absolutely striking just going for demos i think there was like three within the first 20 seconds or so like that's a that's the time to play around with this right there towards the end you called it that's when you go for the demos right there but instead they spent three and a half minutes or so yes there's a mental game into this but i think that if that's your goal that the mental game is your goal like just simply forcing somebody to mentally reset over and over again from playing on field try to pick up boost try to field ball try to communicate so okay well i'm just sitting out you know might as well be a first person shooter respawn for a couple of seconds <laughs> <laughs> if that's your goal, you can do that in much, much less time than, than seriously, like two thirds, three quarters of an entire game and a game four that was yours to lose. It's just a bit unfortunate here. It feels like Wayne State were starting to put the puzzle pieces together, but then randomly someone from their house just came through and went, whoops, and swiped it all <laughs> off the table. I love once. It's, uh, it's unfortunate. It's really one of these things where I feel like the series definitely could have gotten to that game five had they played a little bit more carefully there. It just feels like the nerves got the best of them. And, well, unfortunately for Wayne State, in a best of five, you don't really have that many chances to try and recover. So not a bad game from Wayne State by any stretch of the imaginations, but we also really do have to give credit to Grand Valley here. They were a very impressive team. And and one of the most impressive things about that is that their resilience just came to play almost every single time. So I'm impressed by Grand Valley State University here, but I'm also impressed by the fact that we now have another interview to bring on up. We're going to take a quick little break here, but when we come back, we will speak to those Grand Valley players and maybe they can give us some insight to how they won that one. Do not go anywhere. We'll be back in just a couple of moments. Wow. Just kicking down all the doors, guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job, that's real big. Say trying a little, my God, is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cards, is real big. I got to do it big. The only way that I can live. Hey man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Jeez, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Oh, that is comfortable. Yeah, I think too small, I got big dreams. You just starting, I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a sore, I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job, that's real big. Satan trying a little my god is real big stayed up on the grind on the cars is real big i gotta do it big the only way that i can live and i promise i'm trying to before you count me out homie let me remind you they was blocking the shine now i think it's my time to capping them dollar signs like lights they'll blind you let me rewind to back when i was broken i couldn't acquire two cents and now i got two wrists they were sleeping on me homie must have got too big Call my phone, I'll be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new. Smell like can too. I'm fresh forever like can food. Try and tell me what I can't do. I want to see the world, my vision on share mood. I mean, I got goals that's real big. Foes that's real big. Your offer too little, sorry, my soul is real big. Coming into the ring with blows that's real big. I got to do it big. That's the only way I can live. What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. What sound experience would you like to know? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. 
And could you make it a cloud two wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Wow. Ain't accepting ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out and finished his bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job, that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God, is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars, is real big. I got to do it big. The only way that I can live. Hey, man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Jeez, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. That is comfortable. Y'all think too small, I got big dreams. You just start I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a saw. I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out and finished his bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job, that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God, is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars, is real big. I got to do it big. The only way that I can live. And I promise I'm trying to Before you count me out, homie, let me remind you They was blocking the shine, now I think it's my time to Careful them dollar signs, like lights, they'll blind you Let me rewind to Back when I was broke and I couldn't acquire two cents And now I got two rents They was sleeping on me, homie, must have got too big Call my phone, I be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new Smell like can too I'm fresh forever like canned food Try and tell me what I can't do I wanna see the world, my vision on Shamu That mean I got goals that's real big Foes that's real big Your offer too little, sorry, my soul is real big Coming into the ring with blows that's real big I gotta do it big, that's the only way I can live What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. What sound experience would you like to know? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. The HyperX Cloud 2 wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Accepting, ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out and finished his bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, job that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God, is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars, is real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live. Hey man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Jeez, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Oh, that is comfortable. Y'all think too small, I got big dreams. You just starting, I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging. 
And we're back. We got a little interview action coming at you here after the Grand Valley State University 3-1 victory over Wayne State. We got Cyber Sausage here with us. Cyber, Cyber you with us? Cyber. Hey, yeah, can you hear me? I can, yeah, I can. I can, I can. Bass? Well, Cyber, all I'm going to say first off is congratulations. You guys had a very impressive result there in that game. Uh, final game. You get another shutout there. It's your first shutout of the uh, shutout of the series. It's a one to zero. Did anything change in that game? Because it very much felt like to us in the booth that somewhere between game three and four, you guys started either taking it more seriously or playing more reserved. Was there a game plan in that game four that switched everything up? Because that was, in my opinion, the most controlled you had of a victory the entire series. Yeah. So game one, we kind of came out and just like kind of blew them out a little bit and then i think game two we just got a little comfortable and then after that game three and four we we're like all right it's time to like dial it back in here so uh we just kind of played more a little bit more, more controlled and uh controlled the pace of the game a little bit more I would say so. I mean, that's pretty much what we were saying, you know, talking about here in the booth was the fact that you guys did sort of break down that pace of play and make your opponents, I would say, a little bit more uncomfortable. Was that part of the goal of what you were doing there? Because it did sort of seem like you guys weren't necessarily trying to force shots on target as much as you were trying to disrupt the defense and then eventually find yourselves opportunities. Hey, listen, man, it was a great victory. It was really, really well done. I would say all around you guys were able to kind of control that, like you said, during the back half of that series. Any greater ambitions for you guys at this point here? Because ECAC, we're only in the third week of this one. Is this going all the way? You guys looking to try and take the tippy top mm -hmm. of this now? Hey, we're hey, we're in it to win it. We're in it to win it. We're going to do as best as we can for sure. That's the mentality you love, and that's the mentality you always got to keep here. Tug, I'm all out of questions, my friend. If you got any for our main man here, let him rip. Absolutely, absolutely. A competitor through and through, Cyber Sausage. I love to hear it. Now, uh, first question here. That game four, what was up with all those demos? Did you count the number of times <laughs> that you and, you and your teammates got demolished? <laughs> I'm dead. I'm dead. Good luck. Good luck. But yeah. <laughs> there you go. Hey, the, the, the respawns multiple times for your squad came back through and actually kind of put you guys in a more definitive position. Wayne State definitely switching the uh, switching the roles right there, switching the uh, the look on this game right there. But not really too much of an avail because you know you guys got goose egg, got you goose egg them. They're very very in a very close game. It was indeed. My question is about closeness though. Which of these games do you feel like was the most close? Um, I think the last game, uh, because we got that one goal at the start, and then uh, I think their game plan going in was like, all right, we, we're kind of losing. Uh, let's try and get as many demos as we can and just disrupt them. And so we were kind of caught on defense all game, so mm -hmm. I think that was the closest game. And perhaps if, uh, you know, demos equaled out, you know, 10 to a single score or something like that, maybe they come out on top, but that's not going to matter. Instead, you guys clawed on for five minutes, like you said, or basically five minutes, like you said, after striking first in that game number four, and then really just like a lot of hold on from there. But, uh, but again, a fantastic performance there, Cyber Sausage, Grand Valley State University, taking the three, one victory over their opponents, Wayne State. Before we get you on out of here and get the overwatch started here, I'm going to ask if you have any shout outs. Uh, I don't think so. My uh, my Twitter is Cyber Sausage, so if you want to go follow that, go ahead. But uh, yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. Not a problem. Not a problem. That has been it for your ECAC Rocket League here for week three. Be sure to stay tuned, everybody. We've got some hot, spicy Overwatch action. That's SCAD, the Savannah College Vartan design coming on up against Bethel. That'll be Big Hungry Phil and Dryad bringing you that action. First and foremost, I want to be able to give a shout out to the people and the organizations that make this one here possible. That is HyperX, EMP Live Designs, of course, Esports Gear, I Buy Power, League Spot, CSMG, Dream Seat, as well, Lenovo Legion. Lenovo Legion knows that you play to win. Why else do you play video games? To stand out from the competition, you need equipment. 
matches the speed of your thoughts and your action. The Legion Y25 monitor delivers those wins in the toughest and most critical of situations, y'all. With its extreme one millisecond response time to the insane 240 hertz refresh rate, the Legion Y25 doesn't just keep up, it does a lot more. Built for those engaged in vast multiplayer battles at the tournament level, the Legion Y25 offers that 24 and a half inch full HD IPS panel with built-in NVIDIA G-Sync compatibility, not part of the read. It also has one of those microphone arms on it. It's so nice. It's so nice. Get to hang the old headset on it. Legion Y25 monitor is available at Lenovo.com and other fine retailers. Guys, you can just kind of Google that and figure out where you can pick it up from around you or have it delivered on over to the house. That's Lenovo Legion, y'all. With that, though, Bash from the Past, I believe that's going to be it here for Rocket League. Do you have anything else for the good people before we get that Overwatch action onto broadcast? Oh, all I'm going to say is you guys better stick around. I'm going to guarantee you right now, Phil and Dryad are going to absolutely crush it with this next cast. So if you guys are fan of collegiate esports you should definitely be here for the end of our night as we go through overwatch otherwise i'm pretty much completely out of everything to say cool. it's been a long day it's not quite over yet but tug these folks are in for quite a treat to conclude it oh yes oh yes i'm a fan of collegiate esports i'm a fan of dryad i'm a fan of big hungry phil and you know where i'll be stay tuned for that coming up here in just a little bit guys
Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the third week of the ECAC Overwatch Tournament. I'm Big Hungry Phil. Joining me today is Dryad. Dryad, what is on the cards for today? Should be a good match. We're going to start off with Bethel and Savannah going against each other for this Overwatch matches. So it should be a good one just to start it off, just to start to see how the teams are feeling for the season. Uh, actually, one thing I do very quickly want to draw attention to is we actually don't get given a list of the the in-game player names. So sometimes it's a bit of a surprise when you see somebody pop up you maybe weren't expecting. However, a name, an actual given name here, I recognize playing for Savannah, that being Robin Uitil, uh, oh God, Robin Uotila. That's uh, a Finnish name. I apologize for my pronunciation. That's uh, Snuppet, former EMEA contender support player, moved over to America to go to college or university. And yeah, here playing for Savannah. So excited to see how he fits into this lineup. Yeah, a lot of good potential that we have, especially in collegiate. I feel like the more that we see that the months pass, the more competitive collegiate gets. And a lot of those contenders players even leaning towards that collegiate path. That seems to be mm. very good. So it's a nice one again to start it off to have the, the new uh, players coming into the teams and also everyone trying to build that synergy to to work together towards that greater victory that they're aiming towards. Yeah, I think as we see the... Uh... You have the parallel path to grow that is collegiate begin to develop more and more. You will see bigger and bigger, or at least more memorable names in the game. But coming in the game at the start, starting here on Oasis, we have a college playing the blue Savannah in the red, and we are starting on Garden. What's the, uh, what's the flavor of the moment? Watch, Dryad. Ooh, what the... battle. It's a mix Once of a little bit of the starts, same plus a few surprises. I think that's the best way to describe. You know, the meta at the moment, so those compositions that we know very well are still shining in the chaos, but with the addition of those DPS and the variety of DPS, of course, that we have in this game are really what are enabling a composition to uh, shine the most recently. So we've seen a lot of people playing something like soldiers, something like uh, Doomfist that I'm usually against, and uh, we actually might be seeing a couple of those varieties for today, but again, a little bit more of a one of those control maps where we know exactly what they're going to be bringing to this little bit of a slow start there for Bethel. Big J5 struggling with the teleport from James back onto Trace. It has allowed the to take the high ground here. That's Alone and Donny guarding the same platform. Seeing Bethel make the rotation down along the low ground. Alone has to take a big shot there. Big J5 comes around the corner, catches Alone down, but he's traded out. Big J5 walks too close to the finish threat. He's snuffing, taking it out of the picture. So no big reason for the match of Bethel just yet. That gives us a high ground. Drop down, be careful. Big G is still back on the high ground. There's a lot of potential to take a Zen out of the fight. There's Momo out of the mech. He's making a big one. Power Driver. Doesn't have Power Driver offline and it's a bad college. Slowly taking Bethel out of the fight here. Looking like they're going to round this one out. Zen gets an extra crank. I think it's a lot of damage from his actual way. Can't be a it's a pretty long fight to start it off, but again, those two control maps make it very difficult to clean up those fights. Even after the kills that we saw towards the beginning, was everyone in Savannah fighting uh, to stay in the top, and that is exactly what they were able to do. Now they have all the support ultimates coming up to continue working towards maintaining that control, while on the side of Bethel, they're still struggling to come in together. The a very nice one again the, the support ultimate doing everything the transcendence was more than enough to also give a little bit of calm for the team of savannah to get that over 50 percent now and they have a rally to continue, so I love to see that rotation from ultimates that they are able to make work, including even a self-destruct view to create a little bit more space for them. Dangerous to try and take on a bit of a scanning caliber. Big J5 will eventually walk out the line of course there. Big J5 care of the health pass on your visor. Have they now with a little bit of a rally? There's Red Ninja tries to get something done here with that visor. Low ground is not where you want to be off of that. On the shoot, the gate lands the sticky, forces out the transcenders from Zack. Big J5 finds the stick onto a loan before that ult can come online, and that is a big advantage in Battle College. Big Zip find one, but not before JK can shove in, pulls bomb, and find a pick onto Jake. 
Savannah College still in charge for now. They may be slowly losing this one out, but it's been expensive here for Bethel. It's going to be the 99 as well going for the set of Savannah where everything becomes more difficult as well. The minefield creating even more space for the team. Bethel fighting to stay on this point, but they already lost so many members. And look at that Savannah. They haven't given up just yet. They're going to take control. They're going to get the last couple kill here. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the, the benefits of this kind of comp. You can just keep tagging on almost indefinitely, and that's what Savannah have done. Adapting out of a safe die attitude, keeping themselves in the fight, and coming close to giving over the point, but not letting it take over. It's 100 to 0 here as we move into the next point on Oasis. The only real big difference that we saw there was the Echo and the Soldier, and when you have a soldier it's so much more difficult to get value compared to an echo especially in a map like this one where you have the advantage of the high ground control along with the diva and they're able to complement each other in a way so for starters savannah already had all the benefit only with that composition we saw the soldier only able to use a single ultimate and getting taken down immediately so betho already behind just by one i want to see what they're able to do next into this one, maybe a little bit of a difference, especially in that composition. And also taking into account the, the timing for when they use those ultimates. Yeah, certainly a couple of missteps ultimate-wise here for Bethel. Hopefully they can clean this up with a bit of time on the field under their belts. Maybe some of those initial nerves ticking off. Quibsy with yeah. the high ground here. Uh, looking for a big power driver onto Savannah, but Savannah take the opposite route here so he can't get that big initiation in. Dangerous, goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Sombra, the hat comes through, they're going to give out JK here, but if they can find Quispy, which they do, this is another big opening for Savannah College. Savannah take, taking a minute here just to wait for cooldowns to come back in, this is a very trade fight so far, both wrecking balls off the table, Whisk is falling here to Red Ninja. Nobody with a massive advantage just yet, but Bethel starting to get the progress on the point unlock, Savannah unlikely to let them just take this for free. Bethel now have good control of the point, a very slow opening fight here, Dryer. A very slow one, especially with those trades that we've seen and we continue to see over and over again. It's It continues to be like that last map, but even a little bit more of that pressure. Even that self shock already available, and it seems like Savannah, they're going to take it again. Yeah, she gives me the double, and I, I was about ready to call that in favor of Beth there, but the quick one-two punch coming in specifically from Skiz, a big part of this. These are maybe in a much better place to take this. Yes, they've given up a Skiz here, underestimated the damage that Zach can pour into the Wrecking Ball, but Savannah College now starting to solidify, still chasing kills, however. They've only just flipped this point, and we are well over a minute into this map. This is a massive fight, sure, it took a long time, but it allowed alone to build that EMP, which is absolutely massive for the next fight. Bethel, they have nothing to do, they have no way to cancel it, the Transcendence is not ready yet, can be ready, but that means that, that Senyata has to play alone. Okay, nicely done, just built that in time, landed a volley and got the ult charge available. But it's not with enough of big J5 who will fall to a volley from Snappy, who now gets that over the line. Red Ninja down to a big stomp through there from the hamster. Here the mech, Zach down to fourth one here as well. Quisby back on point. As the minefield is ready to go, doesn't want to drop them here and now has to get out of dodge and wait for the team to rejoin them. Is the Transcendence that was able to be ready on time, but didn't really get the value that they wanted to. Couldn't keep the team alive. Everyone playing in different parts of the map, as it is natural in a composition like this one, where you know the Wrecking Ball is going to be creating that distraction, that tracer again. So Savannah just continues to take the advantage here. Already just getting everyone. Yeah, pushing the advantage and pushing Bethel back in towards Spawn, a team that is very clearly feeling themselves here. And that's going to be the team wipe. 56 of 60% captured on the point here, and uh, Bethel College need to regroup. They will have ultimates to use in this next fight, however. There's a couple ultimates, but really the ones that can get the most value are maybe the minefield to create some space, maybe the self-destruct too, but none of them that can guarantee a kill right away. And talking about self-destruct, oh! here is one already getting value. Once again, Savannah College are just on top of the game. Red Ninja looking to make a big long flank to try and take the high ground to use that ultimate, but just caught absolutely napping by that uh, self destruct coming in from Donnie alone. Playing right up against enemy spawn here, oh. knows what they're after. Solo EMP! Down goes the Zen. 25 HP okay. is easy picking for a spread weapon like the one of the Sambo. We are at last fight territory here. Savannah College in charge for now. Bethel College slowly leaking players. Red Ninja gets one on the back end of the fight. Momo finds one here with self-destruct. JK still alive though and still causing havoc. Causing the full pistols into the back of the tanks. Low HP here for Quipsy. Receives the stun. One HP down and out. Big J5 if we can keep 
Equalizer. Takes JK out of this one. Donnie manages to remake, and Momo is now out of the mission cell. Big K5 goes toe to toe with Snappy, but did not see the Brigitte on the sidelines. Gets the stern, gets the dome, and Scat take that first map. A really quick first map, too, and even towards the beginning, it seems like it was going to be closer just looking at how long the initial fights were lasting. But after that, it was just the EMP coming in and just the momentum that was building for the setup Savannah College. They never let go. They were always getting that first pick, that initial pick every single fight. And that was just doing everything for them, even with the transcendence, which for me was the biggest opportunity for that comeback on the setup battle. It just couldn't really happen the way that they wanted to. So we got to see what they can do in that second map. I think an interesting development over the course of that one was the fact that the first map was actually a lot more closely contested than the second map. I felt I think we got more point control on the board uh, for Bethel because I think they got zero in that second round. And yeah. the thing that stuck out to me was the insistence on running the soldier for all of this. And, you know, we saw some value coming through from Red Ninja on that pick, but particularly in how valuable the ultimate is, it just seemed like the value wasn't there for them. You got to wonder, is this maybe uh, a case of a comfort pick for this particular player? Or is there some battle plan here with the soldier that we're missing? It might be. Again, I feel like recently in Overwatch, I've seen a lot of those very, very interesting picks coming in for the DPS, which includes a soldier that doesn't really make much sense to me, especially when you're ulting and trying to get value out of it. It's very, very difficult to make it happen, especially also when you're going against an Echo, so it didn't really get what they were looking for. And I hope that we don't really see that soldier again. It just I just don't think that it gets a value as something like a Hitskin DPS a little bit stronger, like that Cassidy is. And that continues to be, it seems like month after month, Cassidy <laughs> is one of the strongest picks. Maybe not in this first control map that we saw, but pretty much every other hybrid or those assault maps where you can just feel much more confident about that. Yeah, buff after buff for Cassidy, whether that's additional cake or the arrow does continue to make them a strong pick in the meta. But we are only one map in, and control is kind of its own beast. Yes, it's sort of a, a pure team fight version of Overwatch that really reveals some interesting things about the teams. But as we move on to our other game types, hopefully we see a little bit more spirit from Bethel and some adaptation, because we do, of course, have at least two maps coming away. For those of you unfamiliar or new to the format, yeah. this is first to three, best of five, whoever you'd like to split that particular set of scales. Um, so yeah, still plenty of time here for Bethel College to make a bit of a run back. We gotta see what can be done. Is It's also a, a lot of a different tempo, I would say, that they have to change to get ahead because we didn't really see it on that first map. And to me, that is already a concern. A first map where you don't see any ultimate getting pretty much any value, it's just not ideal. So a, a change in pace and in terms of how and what ultimates they are going to use first and which after. Even talking about that, those support ultimates that we saw, again, to me, they are crucial. A rally and a transcendence can do so much for a team even to just start a fight even just to take the advantage to scare the enemy team a little bit more so even if it's only those two support ultimates it does wonders for a team to win a single fight okay so it looks like we have our next map lined up mm -hmm. we are going to be going to a payload map next and this is going to be rialto so rialto uh, i think a couple of uh well three fairly distinctive points here Possibly we see some change between them, but I'm suspicious. I'm suspicious. I suspect we're going to be seeing the Wrecking Ball f feature fairly prominently across this map. But as we, we already load in, saw, yeah. yeah, we already saw a little bit of that Wrecking Ball. So why not bring it again? It's also you know, one of those very common tanks that we see in a map like this one. I, I definitely do like to see it, even though I like the the variety, especially depending on the the, the part of the map that we're jumping into. That last one always being so strong for even a double shield that it is not the greatest to play against, but it's a fun one to stop the momentum a little bit for the enemy team. And we already see what the defense is going to be bringing to the table. Not too much of the Wrecking Ball that we talked about, but still, it's going to be a dive nonetheless with the mm -hmm. Winston and the Diva. So I'm curious to see the, the way that that is going to work out for the engagement of the side of Savannah College. We already had a good impression for them, but we haven't seen the way that they like to play with the Winston. And I realize that a lot of teams, that is when they have the most difficulty because now you can't just be a wrecking ball in the back line. You have to play in the front. You have to be the leader for your team. 
have two very distinct playstyles and two very distinct playstyles coming out from our teams. Let's see how this double shield for Bethel College works out. Uh, the Bane of Ranked, particularly at high ranks. Uh, I know uh, people maybe get a little bit fed up of the double shield approach. Let's see how it works out here. Big dive into the back. JK traded out here for Jake. The kills keep on coming through from Savannah. Bethel get a couple in a response and actually maybe coming out on top of this one. Savannah managing to burn some time off the clock and keep Bethel College somewhat pinned up here, but I can't see them winning up this fight. They've lost too many players. And Donnie's going to have a whale of a time trying to get out of this one. Might just know. There's the uh, there's the tag on the uh, on the display name. DMX and back to spawn. Savannah College need to take a step here and regroup. Yeah, the last random remaining members have to back up on the side of Savannah College. Of course, you have the confidence from that first map, but maybe a little too aggressive is not ideal here. So Bethel College will be able to move that payload past the halfway through into the first point. And now in the meantime, we have the Stormbrow trying to build that EMP. Oh, gets detected. A little bit clumsy there. He floats. Looking for a spray down here. Doesn't actually manage to land the hack, but does assist my handy there into the kill. Alone getting credit for that one. It's taken them a little while. They've given up a little bit of ground here, but Savannah College coming back in looking fairly strong. And now they start to hold this big open square on Rialto A, which is exactly where you want to be holding with this kind of comp. It's a fun one. Uh, I was wondering if there was going to be any change for Savannah College after they got taken down, but no, they are committed to the composition alone in the meantime, trying to use that pulse bomb. Doesn't really get anything, but a little bit of disruption that this trace is trying to create all the way in the back. Oh, and a big boop. Give this. Takes Red Ninja out of the fight. Red Ninja now on the Ash rather than the Soldier, so a little more variety here, but it's not worked out for them just yet. Down goes the Supercharger. It's just two tanks available here for Bethel College and Savannah College. Know what side they're ready to put it on. They're going to back out here, regroup, and wait for the next push in. The double shield is a good one to just protect your team, but they cannot move forward. They don't have anyone fast enough to even disrupt the backline, so everyone has to play together. And if Savannah College continues denying the face, it's so difficult. I need MP as oh. well coming in. Yeah, lol, JK was stunned out of that one, unfortunately. Big Bash coming in from Jake, but it hasn't mattered here. The kill's still coming in. Fairly hot and heavy from Savannah College. No tanks left standing at the end of that fight as alone runs down Momo at the college. This next fight, they are going to have three alts available, not far off a fourth. So this is their big opportunity. The biggest opportunity, if anything, because they've been taking so long, especially with the composition that Bethel has. And this is a now or never situation, about a minute by the time that it starts. Pulse bomb in the back, and that's unfortunate. Jake, the lone victim of a lone pulse bomb, the duplicate coming through from Big J5. As the Winston locks and loaded, but whilst that ultimate has been charged, the kills have come through at a rapid pace from Savannah College, and Bethel College only finds out what in that exchange. It cost them one ult, and Big J5 has to get out and can't even do that. We're now down below the one minute marker here, Dryad. And Bethel only have two tank ults to play with in this fight. One last chance here. The Flux may be trying to get something, and the Supercharger can be good enough to get one pick or two, but those supports are so hard to get on the side of Savannah College. Yeah, this is going to require some pixel perfect precision and coordination for this to work out. And at the 30 second marker, we lose Red Ninja, we lose Zakir. It's going to be the quickest of resets here for Bethel College if they want to keep themselves in the fight, because it's just cleave through the entirety of Bethel College and now we are down below 20 seconds and we've got EMP to contend with. They're going to get EMP'd out of spawn if JK's got anything to say about it. Oh, you already know that he's going to go for that EMP every oh. single time. He did it once, he will do it again and the last couple kills coming in there for Savannah is. College. Yeah, will deny any opportunity for Bethel. This is going to be a tough one. Bethel, who was just fighting to get out of spawn every single time, and I'm surprised even towards the end, they didn't change their composition, they stayed on that double shield, and they couldn't ever get out of spawn. I think the, the, the bright spot here for Bethel is you could see them thinking through and attempting to adapt to what Savannah were doing. We saw Red Ninja move off the Ash and onto the Cassidy to get that additional stun. It's a, it's a big flashbang with a hitbox roughly the size and shape of Jupiter. Very easy to stop a Tracer or stun <laughs> a Winston. It just wasn't quite enough still. I feel like Bethel College have looked and seen what the composition is supposed to do on paper, but just aren't quite experienced enough with it to really run it into what Savannah have. Yeah, it, it's a tough one for sure. So Bethel College at this point, this is when that double shield can do more. They will be bringing it out as well with an Ash. So I really like that decision making. You don't really 
allow you cannot allow any space to be taken by this out of savannah college but the thing is that they have to play all together and that also becomes a risk factor because you know how aggressive savannah college likes to play we have someone in the flank pretty much every single time even the supports have been playing a little bit more aggressive for this team so bethel college they have to play very careful and make sure to cover every angle that they can to take a chance here to hold as much space as they can well, at least they've got a nice commanding view of this opening choke here. It's going to be not quite as aggressive we saw from Savannah. No dive potential here for them, but a lot of big potential. But Big J5 is going to have a heavy task here. They're looking for him to uh, find big opening frags. And Savannah College, if they swarm and find one pick, that is them with the momentum sternly yeah. in their favor. Skiz staging on the low ground. Has been spotted, but jumped up to engage. And for now, is buying space. Drops the shield, receives the stun, and is in a little bit of trouble here. Eventually bites off more than they can chew and gets taken out of this fight. Alone, backs away, and all this time, the car has been making steady progress. And it's main tank for main tank, with a big speed advantage here on the side of Savannah. So expect to be back in this one pretty quickly. Number finds alone again, a high-speed target taken off the table. Bethel College are punching out, but they are backpedaling the entire time here. And Savannah are still finding picks drive. That immortality for Bethel as well was used a little too early. Now the Baptiste gets taken down. This is it. It seems for Bethel College. Everyone taken down one by one. Savannah College, they have not stopped moving that payload. And even the ultimate, they're about to be ready. This is just a destruction for this attacking or for this defensive team. Yeah, like a busy swarm of bees, Savannah College move forwards and continue to find kill after kill after kill. The hack comes through, almost gets the boot combo there and takes over out of the fight care of a trip into the canal of reality but the emp comes through the kills continue to rain on through and savannah college put themselves at match point this has been a speed run here by savannah college one of the fastest first and second maps that we've seen i think ever it's so rare to see these especially in a map like this one where there's a lot of potential opportunities but that means willing to make a complete change if necessary and we didn't really see that for the side of Bethel the way that we wanted to the way that could have given them a bigger chance so a little bit unfortunate for them there they have one more chance one more opportunity here one more map but again, even changing the composition that we saw initially, just depending on what they thought it was going to benefit them more, it just didn't really seem to be enough. Savannah is just such a fast and quick team. They do not waste a single second to go in and to get those kills. Yeah, I almost feel like what we're seeing here from Bethel is uh, a comp that is like, it's very solid, it's very stable. It's kind of designed uh, around the, the older bunker style to try and discourage this sort of dive attempt. And for now, it's just not working. I almost want to see them lean more heavily into things that they are more comfortable running, even if that is uh, maybe something a little wonky. Like, I would rather see strong individual successes on a player level right. in a composition that is a bit wonky compared to a wonky composition with everybody a little bit... Uh, outside of of their normal comfort zone looks like we are having to take a short pause here to get our teams a chance to flex their wrists so we're going to throw it to a little break and we'll be back in just a couple of minutes
Okay, wrists nice and limber now, and our teams are just about ready to go into what could be the final map of the series. And, and Dryad, you and I were just talking about the last time we got to cast together was again for ECAC, uh, and that was the only map five of the regular season in last season's ECAC. And it looks like we're kind of having the exact polar opposite here, right? This uh, could be a very, very quick series unless we see Bethel really start to turn things around. It seems like it's going to be a quick one. It's it's hard to see a a completely a complete change in pace here unless there's a new addition or a new crazy composition that we mm -hmm. haven't seen before. But we already saw the double shield. We already saw the dive a little bit more. So now it's just going to be maybe a rush. I mean, that would be the only missing yeah. composition here to see. And it's actually a good possibility on this map. Yeah, uh, the Symmetra Rush in particular, it's uh, it's cheesy, but it's a classic. you got to give it that. Uh, probably the best symmetra map in the entire Ready map pool. Just wanted to take a second, Dredd, to uh, outline some of the stakes here. Actually, both of our teams currently 2-0 and o in the tournament um, after, well, obviously, two weeks played. So this is going to be the yeah. first uh, L on the board for either of these teams, depending on how it goes. So, Bethel College, if they want to avoid that, this is where they've got to step things up. But we are seeing Savannah starting here on the defense, Bethel on the offense, and Savannah College only making that one little adjustment to their comp. And one little change hopefully can use something bigger in here for this little Bethel College if they want to uh, take the victory of this map, especially as they are starting on the attacking side. And that is when things can become very stale if you're not changing and mm -hmm. you gotta just bring something new to the table. So I do like to see this Cassidy right from the beginning. I also like, we just saw Alone putting down a Junkrat trap, predicting that there might be a uh, Symmetra play coming through here. Ultimately, that's not going to be the case. And Bethel College coming in on a weird hybrid comp. And Alone Ooh. from the back ropes, slam junk with the mine, and takes Jake out of the fight. Clean up time from Savannah, and Bethel College back to spawn. Uh, look, I'm as happy as anybody to see a Torbjorn in the fight. Look, don't get me wrong, I love to see it, but I don't think it's bringing anything here. I would say you would expect a Torbjorn to be coming from the defensive side, not the attacking side to start it off. So it's an interesting one for sure, but so is the Junkrat, right? There's a lot of weird things going on into this one. And it's already a first fight that Savannah College was able to build. We already know how this went the last time, especially knowing that the kills are not going to stop for them. Good opportunity oh, here, wow. though, for Bethel. Yeah, I mean, Savannah just really overplayed this one. Uh, unless Cabimus and Snappy can hold this entirely by themselves. Oh, and of course, alone still there, but the Whipshot takes out the tire. And Savannah College momentarily on back foot. Bethel will have a real opportunity to go in and get some point catching. Yeah. JK oh. almost has this EMP online, but has to TP back out. And I think they're going to give over at least a tick here before they can recontest. Everyone just trying to come together for each side of Savannah College. And you know they are about to do just that. It's going to be the Prima Rage as well, creating a lot of space. Has to destroy the wow. mortality first, though. There's the kill. And amazingly, that was whilst a lot of damage was coming the waves here through the duplica uh, amplification matrix. And the tanks from Savannah College are back. And they have found a couple of picks here. Hasn't stopped them giving over the second tick. JK has the EMP. Might not need. Here we get the Molten Core out from Big J5. But it's nothing but a bit of a Hail Mary as Snappy is able to focus them down here with the coalescence and despite an overwhelmingly large opportunity here from Bethel College, Savannah come back in and slam the door in the face. Four ultimates used on that fight though for the set of Bethel College. They only have really that supercharger remaining and maybe the high noon hoping to do something at least a great space to initiate that next fight with the EMP. We already know how it's been going that last time. Nice and close to just what you want with an EMP and it's a five man EMP here from JK and unsurprisingly kills a plenty on the back of it but alone and Johnny both in a bit of trouble here alone back to spawn Johnny momentary defenses out of a big J5 you saw them bring out the hammer looking for the hammer kill ultimately it wasn't enough as JK takes them out of the fight here again Bethel with an opening but they've got to be quick is gonna be quick about a minute remaining as well bethel trying to use that supercharger trying to get any value out of it but it seems like it's not going to be the case the mech though goes down for the side of savannah and an opening once again yeah again this door swinging backwards and forwards as if in a strong gale red ninja able to take Cavamus out of the fight and bethel college now actually have point a under their belt and is on to point b very close to a lockout here but we get a chance at the second point for bethel this is the strongest oh. that we've seen them 
from before. Back to college now. Looking for the second point. And seeing what they can do with it. But alone, all the way in the back. No one looking at him. The tire is going to try to connect with a little bit more. This time around, it's not going to be the case. Crouching tire and junk rat. A lot of death. No, no kills. And this could be the sweet Bethel Company coming in hot. They find a couple of picks here. Captain Bessel along both down. Don is able to find Big J5. And Jake is flayed in the way with the rally running like their life depends on it. Lands the whip shot. Turns tail. Looks to go and try and keep the tanks alive. Red Ninja's about to find skiers. And we are close to one tick being given over here. It's Snappy trying to keep this alive. And the high noon comes off low. And Snappy both down. EMP self destruct as Donnie gets the combo to bring this back around for Savannah. No tick gain here for Bethel College. But what a good push from the Bleaker team. Good not out of this. Red Ninja able to find a couple. Alone takes Red Ninja out of the fight. Skiz is forced to use the primal race to keep himself in this. As Alone finds the double. It's been a big investment from Savannah College, but they are going to be able to stabilize here. Red Ninja was doing so much into that fight. It was the high noon, and then it was just two extra kills that he was able to get. But there it is. Just what happens in this map every single time that spawn advantage that the defense has. It is so strong, and it enabled them to even change into a Widowmaker for a loan. Able to get two kills and denying the opportunity. Not even the 33% that they almost got for Bethel College was possible. Oh, that was... Uh... That was painful for Big J5. Yeah, 2CP, unfortunately, not just a noun, also a verb. Being 2CP'd, winning the fight, and still not capping the point alone, playing down to the low ground, looking for returning players here with a nice line on to score. Doesn't find the pick, and up in the main fight, back on the wings here, Skiz cleaning up as if his hammer was a broom. The last couple kills, once again, is coming through into a uh, half a fight that we saw, especially after that first pick no that alone was able to get. And he's hungry for more. He's looking for more. Going to use that infra side as well to make it easier, but nothing yet. Uh, the mark of uh, telemarketer level of confidence here for alone, playing in a less than safe position up away from the safety of their team. Donnie receives the nano. Down goes the immortality field. Down goes Zach here. And uh, we'll see them come away from this with self-destruct. And a uh, bit of bit of fancy movement there just to round out the fight. Looks like we might see Momo get away with this. But Logan's going to fall to Big J5. So Savannah are going to have to back out a little bit here, I think. A very aggressive push coming in here for the out of Savannah College. They haven't given up and they're getting value with it. It's insane. They are at the enemy spawn and they're getting all the kills they could need here. Yeah, this is, a, this is the thing you see at the highest levels of play, is you play Can I Lick the Spawn Doors? And this is two maps in a row where Savannah College have managed that one. We're actually down below a minute here. And uh, Savannah College are playing up against other colleges' spawn doors, and they've got all to play with here. Bethel College struggling to... They're going to have to use ults just to get out of the spawn doors here. They are starting to find some purchases. as JK goes down. And uh, Ship caught napping here by Quipsy. Big anti comes in. Quip is able to survive through that. Alone's finding one. Momo's having a nap here. But by the time Bethel have made their way to the point, Savannah will be back and ready to fight. Yeah, even if they get taken down, they're coming right into the point. So it doesn't really matter for the of Savannah College oh. if they get taken down. If Alone gets taken Humorous. down here, there's 10 seconds though. For Bethel to touch point, they have some ultimates to work with. I like those dragons. They can create a lot of space into this point. Start things off here with the self destruct from Momo. He's out of commission as JK finds that, and there's just no chance to touch here. Savannah College, they may not have been quite so aggressive as they were holding against Spawn, but by taking that fight up in that left hand choke, they just stopped any chance of a contest. Any opportunity, at least this is the, the strongest that we've seen Bethel play. And they also brought a couple changes, which were nice to see, including that Reinhardt towards the end. And they were able to get more kills than everything that we've seen before. So I already feel a little bit more confident about Bethel and this composition, even if it doesn't work for this map, right? It's mm -hmm. one of those compositions that they can continue developing for other maps. And that might be one of those compositions that I would say it is the, the safest play for a lot of teams. Bethel, so far, for the entire season, they haven't done too bad. And it's a lot of opportunities, a lot of months still to, to get better and to improve. So I really like to see this change. I really like to see how strong they're looking in this map. And of course, Savannah is just very, very dominant towards the end. It's just something that we cannot deny. I want to see the last picks that they go with here because... I would expect them, just like we saw on the defense, that for this attacking side, for it to be as fast as it can. 
the thing is, you, you kind of, as a caster, you don't want to talk about what the attacking team are, are currently picking. Um, I think Savannah College, the way they're playing at the minute, the, the level of confidence they seem to have, I'm fully expecting to see the Bouncing Bastion and having this set yep. straight onto point. Oh no, oh. okay. I got you baited. Here we go. It's going to be the Doomfist pick. The Doomfist, and, and I've said it before, I'm a little biggest fan of the Doomfist. It, it can be very difficult, but there's no one that can do anything against him right now. It's going to be a TP right into point, and again, Savannah, oh. they just don't want to waste any time. Wow, alone went for almost a blind punch off to the side there, looking to try and take Big J5 out of this one, but Big J5 comes out, top trumps on that one, but Savannah College effectively pick up the defensive position here. They've lost both DPS and Buffalo College are still happy, healthy, and thriving here. And so, if they yeah. play this right, they can quite easily take this one back. Big J5 in a bit of trouble, has to retreat and receive the health pack. Can't get that one in the room, the soldiers are going to beat him for that one, instead having to go away a little bit further. And uh, Savannah College, a bit of a hiding to nothing on that fight, and they're coming back in with a little bit of a change of tack. Oh, wow, application matrix out early, but it's going to be Donnie that's down first here on the Orissa. Looking for maybe something to equalize that here from Savannah, because right now they're not found it. He's down here, and this is going to be Bethel College on the defense once again, mounting the W. This is an interesting amplification that we saw. It, it seemed like it gave him a space for Bethel to just hide behind and to not take any damage. He still decided to contest it with the immortality and they were able to do just that. So now on the side of Savannah College, they have to back up. They have some big ultimates coming up. Pretty much everything that they would need for this fight. It's just a matter of those support ultimates again. Jake has to use that rally before Savannah College can do and can get any pick. Uh, interesting we've still got JK here on the symmetric because the, the TP was good but other than that it's not really been finding a lot of value. So they're just going to try and brute force this one and Lone's hunting on the left hand side. Donnie's able to find one, the shadow comes in from Skiz but it's not going to be enough as Crypto Zipper takes his out of the fight. Alone lands a big stick and even with the Amp Matrix running it's not going to have Savannah College now large and in charge on the points. Big J5 and Clipsy the last to fall. And hitbox is a big target from that Arissa and down she goes. Onwards to point B for Savannah. Taking a little bit longer than they wanted for Savannah College, but it doesn't really matter. They have an, an amplification to work with next, and they also have the Protomeria coming in for the Symmetra. Should be a good one to start off the fight. And for what could be even the last fight, only the 33% that is going to be necessary. Quick and Bethel College are expect not expecting this. They've taken the right hand high ground approach, and the photon barrier splits the team entirely in two. So Red Ninja struggling to find value now. The tactical visor has to duck and dodge side to side to find somewhere to put this damage. And Savannah College are finding the picks it. JK is able to find Big J5, and they've not got to do too much more. A few more HP points out of the pool, and that is it. They will be taking this. Back in is Cripsy on the Wrecking Ball. Finds a quick pick, takes JK out of the fight, but that's it. That's all they needed. Savannah College with a quick 3-0 win out this series. A very quick one for sure, Savannah. They look so strong against the side of Bethel. And Bethel, they haven't had, again, they haven't had the worst performance throughout the beginning of the season. But just the fact that Savannah was able to take them, take them down map after map the way that they did is absolutely insane. With so many different compositions too, which to me is going to be crucial. As we depend so much on the variety and the flexibility of players coming up and having a chance hands into what is left their future matches that they have so savannah looking really good and i think bethel they were giving us some signs of life as we saw on the last map but they just didn't have enough time to perform the way that they wanted to yeah it's unfortunate and you know being two and one in the tournament as opposed to being three and oh which uh that's the way these score lines are for these two teams is it's got to be a little bit demoralizing, but ultimately you are still one of the top place teams and it's very early on in the tournament. You know, we, we can't say for certain whether Savannah College are going to be the top team in the tournament, but there's no shame losing to the team that is the 3-0 and o team. And hopefully what this does for Bethel is gives them a lot of game footage to go back and have a look at and try and develop some counters, the sort of stuff that Savannah were running. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's a good uh, learning experience as well. Every match that they have here, again, the collegiate scene is full of really, really talented teams. And that means that there's more players coming into the scene and wanting to learn and trying to build that synergy. So this might be just the beginning 
for the side of Bethel, but I do know that all of them have so much potential to, to develop something more. And Overwatch, for sure, the difficult game. So it is nice to see the beginnings of this team, and I want to see how much they're able to improve because we've seen this, especially in a tournament, in a tournament like this one, as we've seen in uh, ECAC and what teams can do and how they can grow throughout the season. I'm sure that for the side of Bethel, they're able to do just that, as we can probably see them in the future. Well, we are going to be seeing just a little bit more from our winning team, Savannah College, in the form of the interview. Whilst we get that lined up for you, we're going to throw it to just a short break. And when we are ready to come back, we'll be back with you. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, everybody. We told you we'd be here, and we're back with the interview portion of the broadcast. And joining us from Savannah College is Snappy, who we're able to give a little bit of an overview of uh, the start of today's match. And uh, Snappy, congrats on the win. How are you feeling having put that W under your belt? Thank you. I'm feeling pretty good about it. A uh, slight correction. Our school is actually called Savannah College of Art and Design. Apologies. SCAD. No worries. Okay. Be sure to correct that in future. So, um, obviously, uh, for those of us or those watching that are 
are maybe not used to hearing different accents. You're a bit of a transplant here to the NA scene. How are you finding the adaptation from uh, playing in EMEA to playing in NA and collegiate? It's actually so different. Yeah, I'm originally from Finland and uh, EU, all of my teams, they were all about like discipline and like strategy and coaching and like, obviously they still do that in NA, but honestly, it's just 18 year old kids dinking heads and screaming. <laughs> uh, I'm the like voice of reason. Wow. Mm. Yeah, it's it's interesting to see maybe the changes. How are you feeling with your team? Do you, do you think uh, it's you are as good as you should be and you can be, or is there a next level that you want to get to with the entirety of the team? Uh, me as a per, like uh, as a solo person or the whole team? The whole team, yeah. Uh, I think there's like so much untapped potential that we haven't even grasped yet. Um, we, we started screaming last fall, we had a winter break, and uh, I'm feeling pretty confident uh, for the upcoming Blizzard tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Sorry for my internet connection, that's the reason I'm pixelated right now. But um, uh, yeah, I think there's, uh, you're going to see a lot better scat in the future. Okay. So are we talking, you know, let, let, let's, let's talk about some of the other big teams in the collegiate scene, uh, your Northwoods, your Redbirds. Uh, are you looking to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys by the time you guys are up to speed? Mm, on paper, I think our team maybe looks the best. Maybe some people disagree. I actually feel like we've been underperforming in screams and... Uh, well, I'm a very strict, uh, obviously, about myself, so maybe others disagree, but like... Uh, especially for the spring tournament, like, so many people got pushed to OWL, I just feel like uh, mm -hmm. our goal should be number one and nothing less. Like if it's less, we we disappointed ourselves. Good, glad to hear it. Yeah, so you guys are feeling pretty confident. But is there any team that you think gets close to your level? Who who do you think is the closest one up there that would make a really good match? Oh well, like the other teams are definitely close to us. Like I don't think we're like superior, like on paper. But like I feel like uh, on a good day, we can beat Northwood. We can beat mm -hmm. Redbirds. Uh, UTD was really good last year. I don't know how the roster is looking. Petal scary, but like yeah, I I, I feel like it's a uh, everyone can beat everyone kind of affair. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a good time to be a fan of collegiate. So snap it, we'll. Uh give you a chance to head out and celebrate with the rest of your team before you go. Anything you'd like to say, anybody you'd like to give a shout out to at the end of the broadcast? Mm, shout out to my team, I guess. I, I, I bet you no Finnish people are watching this right now. It's 4 a.m. <laughs> so like, Probably yeah. not, no. no shout you can, shout you out to drop, Scad. Yeah, you can drop all the uh, all the Finnish swear words you want and no one in America will pick it up. You're completely fine. <laughs> uh, please don't, just in case, but Snappy, thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully, we'll see a bit more of you later on in the season. Thank you. For everybody else, thank you very much for joining us. Always fun to bring you more of these collegiate games. And it won't be myself and Dryad back next week. We'll have another one of our wonderful batch of rotating casters in to bring you all the action. But be sure to tune back in same time next week for more Overwatch action and through the course of the week for more esports from across the ECAC broadcast pool. I've been Bacon Phil. Dry it on the side. Dry it before we go. Anything you want to say to close us out? Yeah, just keep an eye on all the matches that are coming up. And yeah, just keep an eye on all the, the growing teams that are, that are starting right now. And you see them at the end of the season and they look completely different. So you guys, I got to keep an eye on that. And yeah, that's it. Great. Well, thank you again, everybody. And we'll see you around.